Now we're going to look at the art of performance. And we're going to explore the world of the performing arts. Now when we think about the performing arts, there are multiple things that we're going to think about. Typically what we think about are things along the nature of plays, live events, things that take place in front of a large audience. So it could be anything from you know, a Taylor Swift concert to a production at your local theater. So performing arts run the gamut and we're going to talk about individual performing arts. Now, there's a lot of details in this presentation. I won't go over everything. So if you want to pause and read some of the things, uh, so you can pause this video later on, read, and you'll have a deeper appreciation of it. So first of all, as an introduction, there is the quote, all the world is a stage. Of course, this quote is attributed to William Shakespeare uh, in his play, uh, As You Like It. Of course, every, uh, almost every Shakespearean play has been adapted in some form or fashion. Uh, but this iconic line encapsulates a profound concept in the world of performing arts. It suggests that our existence is akin to a grand performance on a vast stage, just as actors take on different roles in a play we, as individuals, navigate various roles and experiences in our lives. This notion underscores the idea that everything we see, hear, and do can be viewed through the lens of performance, and it has the potential to be transformed into a captivating narrative. So in this sense, really what we're, what we're saying here is uh, the performing arts as the humanities are, uh, are part of our lives. If we study the humanities, we're studying human beings. And when we're studying performing arts, we're studying human beings in a performing arena. And as Shakespeare puts it, um, we are performing every day. We are on stage. Um, you know, one of the places I really like to go to is Disney World, and all the people that are work there are not employees; uh, they are cast members. At least that's what they're called. Of course, they're employees of Disney, but they're called cast members. But because the idea there is when they are on stage, meaning when they are in front of uh, those who are there to take part in the experience of being at Walt Disney World or Disneyland or any other Disney parks, their job is to perform. Uh, this is part of a grand performance that when you walk into Disney World, everybody is on stage there and playing a role and playing a part in it. So that's kind of a a small evidential thing that we can see, but we are, you know, all part of this grand narrative and we are on stage when we are in front of people. So uh, introducing this topic, we're gonna ultimately explore the significance of performing arts in our lives. The central theme of this pr presentation revolves around the exploration of performing arts and their role in our lives. In this, we're going to discuss the challenges of engaging with live performance, which demand a unique set of skills and techniques to fully appreciate. The presentation will offer valuable insights into preparing for and enjoying live performances to their fullest. Ultimately, our exploration of the performing arts will reveal their significance as a source of inspiration, entertainment and cultural expression. It is a journey that unites us to discover the magic of the stage and appreciate the artistic diversity that enriches our lives. So this is just a brief introduction of what we're going to look 
look at. And so let's get into the nature of performing arts. So if we're going to define the performing arts, here's our definition. Performing arts is a diverse and dynamic category encompassing a wide range of artistic expression that expressions that are meant to be performed before an audience. These forms are brought to life through live performances where artists use their bodies, voices, and sometimes props to convey stories, emotions, and ideas. So when you think about live performances, usually these categories come to mind. We think about plays, which are live theatrical performances. We think about screen shows, which include movies, television, video, uh, even this. You do a, a YouTube video. You put up something out. It's a screen show. Yes, I'm behind camera. You are looking at a presentation, uh, but it is a performance. Really, right now, it's a vocal performance, and vocal performance along with the slides that you're looking at along with the photography uh, all of this is art form in some form or fashion we might think also of opera which uh, combines the forms of music singing acting and offering uh, elaborate staging uh, you may think of also dance Dance is a form of expression that relies heavily on bodily movements, choreography, and music. Then puppetry. Um, puppet, puppetry is also a performing art. Um, don't see that too much today. Um, and neither do you see the next one, mime. Uh, you might see it, uh, you know, the classic thing is the mime with the face painted white and uh, you know, the hat uh, you can see one of the the hats and uh, the shirt that's black and white uh, usually in the context of uh, a french marketplace and a mime comes up and you know, puts his hand against a window that's not there um, but that's mime you don't, of course you don't see that too often in our context but those are performing arts and notice that this is a wide range of performing arts um, another form that's not listed there but we will talk about it is music and we'll dive deeper into that as well but what are the historical roots of performing arts essentially you know performing arts have been with us uh, throughout all of human history in some capacity, there is a performing art, uh, and different societies have had performing arts in their cultures. Right? Ancient Greece, Rome, India, China, and all civilizations have had some kind of theater, some kind of performing art that they do before the people. Of course, in ancient Greece, for example, theater as we know it today, it's found its roots in religious festivals where plays were performed to honor the gods. These early theatrical performances laid the groundwork for dramatic storytelling, acting, and constructing of amphitheaters. If you've never been to an amphitheater, uh, those are, are pretty unique. Amphitheaters, of course, outside. Um, so. Um, there is one locally if you're in Gadsden. Uh, it's not often used. I believe it's still there. I, um, it's downtown uh, near the water, uh, near the old YMCA. You can find it there. Um, but there's amphitheaters, or of course, open air type theaters in a the theater setting. And of course, and we think about Rome in that and the Colosseum and all that took on there even even that even battle in those cases and what took place in the Colosseum it is pageantry it is a performing art even when death was involved there was a performance element of it 
Uh, India, of course, has their had their own. Then China also. Uh, every culture, Japan, you know, theatrics and live performance were part of those civilizations. So essentially, you know, performing arts have been with us as long as there are have been humans to perform them. But there's also art forms that mix together and we have a combination of performing arts taking place. Uh, what about the concept of combined arts? One of the defining characteristics of performing arts is their propensity to combine various artistic elements into one, uh, into a single co cohesive performance. Uh, this concept of combined arts highlights the synergy between artistic forms to create a multi-sensory and immersive experience for the audience. So we have a combination, a mixture. So you may have uh, an orchestra accompanying an opera. Uh, you may have, you know, musical accompaniment, accompaniment along with battle. You know. When you watch a movie um, and there is a fight scene and then there's music or a battle scene to and, and music is brought over that that's a mixture of art because the art form is the screen show and the battle that's taking place choreographed but then the music is on top of that with you know, choreographed with the battle that's taking place. So it's a mixture, a combination of multiple performing arts. Again, we have musicals where there was a time in which people are acting and then they go into song. I think one of the best musicals that of recent time, of course, is Hamilton. Um, I think the movie The Greatest Showman is a great musical too. That will that will give you an understanding of what we're talking about here. Uh, also, of course, opera, ballet, um, and a performance like Swan Lake, which you have symphonic music accompanying the elements of dance in that ballet. Uh, puppet theater, you see um, a combination of different things. Um, one of the things, of course, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm a kind of a, a Disney nerd. Um, one of the things I've done recently is go to more of the shows and like the, they have a show there, which is based on the Lion King and there is acrobatics. There are uh, dance, of course, music, puppetry all these things going on all at once. And so it's a mixture of performances. And then you have mime and physical theater as well as another example of this combination of performing arts. So what are more types of these performing arts? <clears throat> of course, there are various genres of performing arts. And the world of performing arts is incredibly diverse, offering a wide array of genres and forms, which with its unique characteristics and expressions, each with its unique characteristics and expressions. And so you have, of course, theater, which we have spoken of. You know, there's multiple plays that you can be involved in, multiple plays that are going on even here locally. And plays that you can see at uh, various theaters. You don't have to go all the way to New York and Broadway to see plays. Uh, there are some great uh, theaters and local productions that you can watch. But that is a performing art, of course. Dance, opera, music theater, musicals, uh, puppetry, uh, dance theater, physical theater, all these things are various performing arts. Um, 
And so anytime you have the element of you know, a live audience and someone standing before them, uh, whether they're singing, dancing, um, what, whatever they are doing, playing a musical instrument, it is a performing art. Now, what about performance itself? Uh, itself, what is the essence of a performance? And performing arts have a um, transcendent nature. Uh, one of the defining characteristics of performing arts is their transcendence or transience. Live performances are dynamic and ever changing by nature. They unfold in real time, and once a moment in a performance passes, it's gone forever. This fleeting quality is at the heart uh, of what makes a live performance, a live performing arts, so compelling. So they're spontaneous, they're expressive, I mean, it, and it be found in all forms. Um, I happen to like comedy, and so I, I like to watch comedians. I like to study comedians and their art form, and it really is an art form. But there's a lot of improvisation. There's a lot of spontane uh, spontaneous reactions. Um, you know, if you if you watch a totally improv group. All of that, they're just playing off each other, one after the other, and they're coming up with things on the fly. So there's a lot of brain capacity used, a lot of physical nature used. I mean, every performing art has this in it. Uh, it's the essence of what it is. And it's different from what would be considered static art. Static art would be something like books and painting. Now, books are painting, and books and painting, you know, they're not live. They're not moving. They are, well, they're static. Now, you can open a book, and it's going to be the same 20 years from now um, when you open it again. Uh, it's just printed words on a piece of paper a painting the same way it may give you a different feeling at you know, a different point in your life because you have changed but it hasn't it's still the same but performing arts uh, are not they're they're changing and they and you're never going to do it the same way twice nothing's ever going to be exactly like it was before it's not static it's moving it's vibrant um, even though it may be choreographed to some dimension there's always the element of chance that it might just fall apart uh, you never know what you're going to get when you see a live performance so what about the movement through time and how performances have evolved. Of course, live performances are a dynamic journey through time. They are not fixed or static. Instead, they are in a state of constant evolution as they progress in real time. This aspect is what distinguishes live performing arts from other art forms. In live performing arts, the narrative unfolds progressively and each moment leads to the next. Actors deliver their lines, dancers move through choreography, the musician plays their instrument in a coordinated sequence. The story, the emotions, and the atmosphere of the performance are all fluid and in a state of flux. And so, here we compare it to a wave of water and the analogy of a wave provides a vivid illustration of the continuous flow of a live performance imagine a performance 
as we uh, as a wave of water traveling through time just as a wave is always in motion ever static never static a live performance moves forward with a sense of fluidity and momentum so it's not static it's moving it it's going on and one wave never hits the same place twice because it's just going through you know when you sit and watch a wave it's coming through from the ocean to the beach it's going to crash on the on the shore and that's the end of that wave that that wave will never exist again much like a live performance once that live performance is coming through crashing through it crashes on the beach it's over there's nothing else so we can think about it that way. And when we're watching and participating in live performance, we have this challenge of focusing. Sometimes it's difficult to maintain focus during a live performance. You know, there's some things that will keep, they'll keep our attention, we'll be able to keep going, uh, but there is always a need to concentrate intensely um, and that's particularly necessary for those who are actually involved in the performing art themselves there's an intensity that comes with it um, you know I, I've I stand up and I speak in front of people uh, you know, some people some people would just crawl under a table and and never do that you know maybe that's you maybe uh, you would say I, I would never be able to to speak in front of people uh, I think if you could develop the skills you would be able to um, because I used to be the very same way but you know I get up and talk in front of people and there's a you know there's this time right before you're doing it I, I don't I don't get butterflies anymore you know and, and I don't get really nervous but I'm trying to focus and you know sometimes people will come up and talk to me right before or they'll you know but as much as I can I want to limit all those distractions before I'm actually going to speak because I'm thinking about what I'm going to say um, so there's an intense need to focus during live performance of any type and then there you know there's also a need to concentrate even before that begins and this goes into kind of some preparation before the performance um, as I won't go through all these steps but I will say you know preparing for a live performance is an essential way to maximize your enjoyment and participation or appreciation uh, of the art form now here's some things to do um, read the program notes and summaries this is before you take part in watching a performance uh, being well rested practicing focus techniques uh, familiarizing yourself with the art form arriving early and minimizing distractions um, if I'm if I really want to see something really want to concentrate on something I won't sit in the back uh, I won't sit in the back of the room I want to be as close to the performance as possible because I want to appreciate it and be able to watch it and not be distracted by everybody else that's playing with their phone or or doing what else whatever else and then reading the program notes um, having contextual information character plot insights characteristic or artistic choices is uh, choice excuse me and historical and cultural context understanding um, on that note of historical and cultural context understanding um, there's a live performance that takes place uh, multiple times during the summer and it only takes 
place during the summer in Cherokee, uh, North Carolina. And the show is called Unto These Hills. And basically the show is about how the Cher Cherokee Nation, when the Indians were being removed from the eastern part of the United States, the Cherokee Indians went up into the hills and hid, and that's how they essentially remained where they are, because they couldn't be rounded up because they went up into the hills. And it would help one to know of the cultural context and historical context of what took place in the 1800s before they went and saw that performance. And so that's one of those that came to my mind as an example. Of course, you have focusing techniques, concentration, alertness, knowledge of the art form, mindfulness techniques, visualizations, and engage your senses. And uh, to really enjoy a performance, whether you are taking it in as an audience member or actually performing, all of those are necessary. You need to be alert and be able to concentrate. Uh, you need to immerse yourself in it, enhance your immersion, appreciate the nuances that are taking place there, have some emotional connection to the performance. Uh, I guess that's that's really, yeah. You, know, you may you may not think about this too, but when you go to a football game, that's a performance. They are performing for you, the audience. And when I think about emotional connection, that's usually when a lot of people have emotional connection, right, to some football team they like, um, or maybe it's you know going to a Taylor Swift concert and you just love Taylor Swift and you got an emotional connection or emotional connection to a band that you're going to see. Um, also, there's this respect for the artist and uh, having a, a memorable experience, you know, experience that you would share with people later on when you are older. So it, it needs to be one of those things where the live performance, you are uh, there to enjoy it. And it needs to be an enjoy, enjoying um, or a joyful experience. It, is, it has, of course, a live performance has an ephemeral nature. Uh, meaning it occurs in real time and it can't be revisited. I mean, it can be revisited in our heads, but once it's gone, it's gone. Uh, it's dynamic. Uh, some have an interactive element. I think about stand-up comedy and people who do crowd work. Uh, this is very interactive. Uh, a sensory, a sensory, sensory richness. Um, all your senses are involved, uh, the visual, the auditory, the tactile, all these things are involved. And there, it's a rewarding experience um, to engage in a live performance. There is an emotional resonance that takes place. There's artistic depth. There's lasting memories made. There's a sense of connection. You know, you may not think about this, but, you know, a speech by a politician or some, you know, influencer, it's, in a sense, a live performance. And you can have a sense of connection with what they're saying and their overall goal. And it's like you're part of a live performance, right? Uh, and then there is an aspect of cultural enrichment with some of these art forms. Again, navigating the way we talked about live performance, it's moving, it's going to crash, it's going to be 
over. Uh, so we need to be engaged in it. So we need to be mindful and breath aware, uh, have general, general, gentle self reminders as we navigate through, uh, reconnect with our senses, maintain eye contact, use program notes, uh, avoid self criticism in this, um, visualize the wave, uh, share the experience, uh, be fully present, practice, focus on everyday life. Um, and this is, these can be used whether you're part of an, a live performance as an individual taking part in it, actually performing yourself, or um, you're actually just watching the live performance. Well, the art of performance appreciation. Now, ultimately, we need to appreciate these art forms. Um, the, again, defining what these performing arts are. Performing arts encompass a wide range of art forms meant to be performed, including theater, dance, opera, puppetry, and more. Uh, understanding the historical roots. This is a summation. Uh, understanding there's a diversity of genres. And then the transience and preparation that goes into focus techniques and then just enjoying the live performance. So I encourage you to en enjoy this opportunity to look at live performances now a little differently than you were before as you've walked through this uh, this presentation when you do uh, realize it's an immersive experience you're going there immerse yourself in it uh, appreciate the artistic depth that goes along with it uh, appreciate the cultural nature and maybe through these perf performing arts and these art forms, it will help you appreciate other cultures. And then realize that there's this collective connection. You know, those in the audience, they're not just like you. Um, you know, we all come from different backgrounds, um, maybe big cultural or communal. Um, but if we see a piece of art and a live performance you know, and we're all together looking at it and watching it and appreciating it and taking part in it, well, that brings us together as a collective nature that takes place there, even though we're coming from different viewpoints and backgrounds. So here's a few discussing questions. I may ask some of these moving forward, but I hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll see you in the next one.